Okay. That's exactly right. We have a, a bunch of questions right over here. Yes, let's, let's do this quickly. Uh, yes, I'd like to know, uh, Jack made some comments regarding salary versus uh, tuition, uh, excuse me, merit-based uh, financial aid. I think you used a, something like $100,000. The average is about $15,000 is what they'll pay. First, is that public information? Is that available for all colleges? Um, and then second, Dee, can I hire you to come home with me for a couple of days to talk to my son? <laughs> I've often thought that. We could have the Dee rental service. I know, I know. Make me dinner and I'll come. <laughs> Ooh, you got it right there, yes. Um, it hasn't been public information until recently, and now um, there is a federal law that is making some of it become available. I don't think it's good enough yet. That's out there. I don't think that what we have on our own website is good enough, as you've, as you've noticed. Um, I, I think that, uh, as Joe has suggested, this is the most complex decision that any family will make. It's more complex than buying a house, more complex than buying a car. I don't believe that there's adequate information yet uh, to parents on making that. And so that's why, um, through some national organizations I'm part of, we've really been trying to convince uh, the Department of Education that that is an, that's a fertile area for them to continue to um, encourage uh, colleges and universities to provide better and better information. Now, there is some danger to it, I will say that. Since we've made this information public, and if it says that uh, a family greater than $100,000 is getting is paying $15,000 a year, I've had a ton of calls from parents who are making $150,000 a year saying, well, I'm paying uh, $19,000 a year. This is not fair. Well, you, you know, I mean, it's, this is not Lake Wobegon. We can't have everybody on one side of the average or the other. And uh, that it, so that is a problem. But I still think even with that kind of confusion that you get with parents that recognize this as an average, there are going to be some people that are better, there are going to be some people that are worse. It's better to give them the information and then deal with uh, the issues than to hide the information from them. We have a question over here. Yes. Hi. Um, this time of year I'm collecting all my paperwork to go to the tax man. Is there a legitimate service that will help you with the FAFSA, even if I had to pay a small fee for it, like an accountant or the tax man? Eileen? I don't think anyone needs to hire anybody to do the FAFSA. Col uh, the federal government made it a free application for federal student aid because it doesn't want you to have to pay to qualify for, for assistance. The government has just instituted a great way to fill out a FAFSA. If your taxes are already done and submitted to the IRS, when you're online filling out your FAFSA, you can check the box that says, Go to the IRS and take the information from them, and you don't have to put anything down because it transfers the information from your tax return onto the FAFSA. That's new this year. It was a pilot last year, halfway through the year, so hardly anybody saw it, but it's full-blown and a great option. I don't think anyone should pay anybody to do that for them. D. It's a, it's a pretty simple form to fill out. Also, in January, there's Financial Aid Sunday, which is usually the Sunday before Super Bowl. They got smart. They had it on Super Bowl one year, um, where many of the colleges actually send people to help you fill out that financial aid form. So if you've done your taxes, you have all the information you need. And I did it um, because we were doing a segment last week on, on uh, the price of college. And so I filled it out. And you just need to have all the information at hand to do it. You shouldn't have to pay. It is free. You shouldn't have to pay someone to do it for you. Kim? Yeah, I, I actually have, I have two minds about this. You're paying someone to fill out your taxes, right? I mean, so it's not immoral to pay someone to fill out a free tax form. So while there are many shysters and charlatans, there are certainly legitimate people who will help you fill out this complicated form. I don't think it's you know, wrong to ask for some help. The College Goal Sunday is a great service. I volunteer yes. every year. I think we've missed it. I think it's over. It's over. Right. It was in January. But every year, if you look up College Goal Sunday, there are people like me and Dee who help people fill out their FAFSA so you can get free help that way. Often colleges, if you go to the college and you ask for help filling out the FAFSA, the college will help you do it for free. Um, secondly, the thing about the taxes, you have to file your taxes and then wait, I think, nine business days. They, it takes the IRS nine days to c comp compute the information, and then you can go on the FAFSA, and it'll pass the information over. Okay. One last question, right back here, yes. 
Um, one quick one and uh, maybe one little longer. Uh, you said a little bit of work is good. At what point does working too much start to uh, interfere with a student's ability? Uh, and what sort of hours do you think is, is appropriate and inappropriate? And the second one is, how much has the uh, change from uh, FELP to DL changed the financial uh, ability, changed the amount of aid that's available and how you get it? Um, uh, okay, so the change to FELP to DL did not affect the amount of loans that you could borrow. In fact, it created the amount of, it, it created, it gener by reducing the subsidies that they gave to the lenders, they increased the Pell Grant. So it increased the amount of money that's available to you. And your first question, oh, the, how many hours? Research shows that students who work more than about 15 to 20 hours a week uh, drop out more and have worse grades. So you want to keep the hourly work minimum to about, a maximum to about 15 hours a week. Eileen? I think Kim got it all right there. <laughs> I, I, the, the direct loan program has all of the same um, benefits for students that FELP had. That was through the lenders and we did see a benefit to students in increased Pell. So it, it was a great change for students. Joe? I just have a slight difference than Kim on, on the hours. Uh, I, I worry about anybody that's beyond 10, 12 at the max. Uh, you get to 15, in essence, that's two full days a week of work. And I think that's tough when we're talking about a full-time undergraduate who wants to benefit by the other value propositions that may be available outside of class. So, but it's in that range. Excellent. I want to thank you all for coming today. And I want to thank all of you as well to Now, Jack, I know you're going to retire as the president of UMass. I know you're not retiring and dropping out of society. I hope you come back sometime soon. And you, I know you have some big plans ahead, right? Thank you, Anthony. I'm looking forward to the next phase of going back to teaching and working with students, doing a little research. And that's, that's where I started my career. And I'm looking forward to, to being there again. Well, thank, thank you, Jack Wilson, the president of UMass. Eileen O'Leary, thank you so much, Stonehill College. Uh, Dr. Joseph Moore from Leslie University, Kim Clark now from Money Magazine, and you know Dee Lee from WBZ. Thank you all for coming this morning, and uh, we'll see you on the radio. We'll have reports online and on air, and I just want to take one moment to thank our presenting sponsors, Hudson University in Bangor, Maine, Landmark College, First Republic Bank, Salem Five Bank, Leslie University, thank you very much, Citizens Bank, True Fit Student Loan, and the National Multiple Sclerosis Society, IBEW Local 103, and Foxwoods Resort Casino. Also our associate sponsors, Bridgewater State University, Window World of Boston, MIFA, the Massachusetts Educational Financing Authority, and Worcester Polytechnic Institute School of Business. And if you want to see some sumo wrestling, it's going on on the second floor. Thank you so much. Make it a good day, and we'll see you on the radio.